love it. We're meeting in Memphis because uh, we live, what do you think, five, six blocks apart from each other? True. In Brooklyn? Yes. So just, we're really neighbors, but it really took a trip down to Tennessee to get together. To bring us back together. We like see each other like really in New York City. We always see each other at like a festival or on tour. somewhere totally random. Or babies all right. Or babies all right. Or that's like the meeting. Or phase. you're coming from the pool. Yeah. Oh yeah. And so I haven't like, showered and I'm just like a mess. How often do you feel like you're going to the pool? Is that your is that your daily regimen? The at this pool point? is done right now. That was it. It's done for the season. Yeah, done it's so the summer. It's so like last summer. summer. It's only summer. It's already emptied. It's probably they're in the process of emptying it right now. How was um, tour practice, tour rehearsals in Nashville? It was good. Yeah, it was. Uh, it's always kind of a luxurious experience because it's like you you have your like full on show set up. Yeah. All the lights are there. You can hear everything super well, it's a clearly. What's suspended reality because it will never be as pristine yeah. in that moment as it is at like a real show. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Although, whenever we whenever we rehearse in New York, we rehearse at CMS, and normally we're in one of the small rooms yeah. and just hearing everything through the PA, like I guess every other band in the world does. So are you on you're on in ears and everything. You're doing you're doing the full thing. Yeah, yeah. Because I was yeah. gonna say it. I mean, the deal that we have down in Nashville is like really really great, and the fact that we can put the production up and we have like the full on like in ear set, everything's amazing. But you haven't always rehearsed in Nashville because I remember when we were getting ready for the second record you were practicing at Westway for a oh, period yeah. of time. Yeah. Yeah, we definitely didn't. This is just a this is a sweet this is the development. This is the next step. This, this is, is a, this is the, the step sweet up. Your development that happened <laughs> yeah, over yeah, yeah. the years. But definitely Westway, definitely. And we get to spend time in, in the South, in Nashville, and Tennessee, and South. Yeah, it's cool. great. Do you get to go out and do anything in Nashville, though? Yeah, yeah I mean, it's yeah. like we're rehearsing for six, seven hours per day, so we get to go out and like have dinner and have some drinks. And A lot of this rehearsal time breakfast. in Nashville is like setting up, realizing that we don't have enough things for. I don't know, guitar strings yeah. and like some percussion thing that I wanted to get. And like, it's just organizing everything, basically. It's I find like it really boring town. and stressful. <laughs> it is no Yeah, town. it is really, yeah. How, like, how hard has it been recreating the set list? Because now that you have two albums, like, I found that really challenging on the Miss Mr. Tour the yeah, second time hard. around. I'm like, you know, obviously people want the singles from the first record, and then you've got to play the single from the second record, and then other more album tracks to like, a new tone well this yeah. is you have favorite songs that aren't singles that you're like that's my favorite song to play live i really don't want to cut it yeah i feel like this is the, gonna be the hardest thing that we will do on this tour is the set list because jean decided hey let's just review every single song that we have because you want to be prepared to be able to play any song yeah exactly to. because yeah. basically up until now like we figured out like a set list for the for the first half of this yeah. year and we kind of basically stuck to that more or less also besides swapping production. out like one yeah, or two yeah, yeah. songs just because like we found that these few songs flow really well together Definitely. and like we start with the sort of more like songwritery songs and go into the sort of like turned up party section at the end yeah. turned up. um but now we just you know we <laughs> like we just got kind of comfortable doing that and and there's a lot of songs that we haven't played for so long yeah. so now we want to kind of just challenge ourselves to mix it up in some way you know and maybe not have elevate as the last song like have elevate somewhere else and play a couple of brand new songs and maybe yeah. cover toto's africa or just you know just like do crazy things that challenge us a little bit and make us feel a little bit like unsettled yeah you know? i really admire that because similarly when we were on tour i feel like the first couple shows we were figuring out like what the right order was because like as you say like you find the certain songs that like lead into the next one really seamlessly or yeah. like just energy wise you're just like figuring out like this the scope and story of, Where to of the show yeah, yeah. So that by the end <laughs> yeah i feel like honestly on both miss mr records cycles at some point we just started playing the same set every night mm -hmm. and i always wanted the flexibility and freedom to be able to play it but it's just really hard to do that yeah, yeah. and the thing is i mean it's not like we're at the point in our careers where we're like a radio head and we have like Ten albums. Oh no no no! Saint Lucia Radiohead. Yeah, I think like, you're pretty. <laughs> you're pretty. You're pretty neck and neck. Tropical. <laughs> um, yeah. So so I think that that's the difficult thing is like people get just get really attached to certain songs. Yeah. And other songs like your like real 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 fans will know those songs, but for most people that it's kind of like the song that they'll go and grab a drink or something. Yeah. You know? So you have to like balance those two 
instincts that you have and sort of try and pepper them throughout the set. But it's always, but what, know, always yeah. having the key staples. Having like, like the key like staples. You're always going to play All Eyes on You. You're always going to play September. We actually, Maybe not. We actually didn't play what? All what? Eyes on You the other day. And, and I was like, you know what? All Eyes on You. Because All Eyes on You was basically the... I would say All Eyes on You was the song where we both kind of knew, okay, we have something yeah. new, you know, this is like a, no, is a new project kind of. that like Jean came up with in a way, you know. And so this has always been a, a go-to song, always yeah. a safe song, always a love song, you know. And the other day we decided, love song? Let's, Go on. Not, <laughs> <laughs> let's not play it. And then we came off stage and the first thing I heard was like, you didn't play all that. I was like, oh. Well, it's funny that you said it because <laughs> I was talking to Derek Atta doing this because I was like, I was like, I don't want to sound crazy, but I'm having a really hard time remembering like the first couple interactions that we had. And so I was saying, I was like, I was like, was All Eyes on You the first song that we heard of St. Lucia? Because that's the, the memory that I had created was that I was with B-Rock mm -hmm. at Heavy Rock Studios and he had played me All Eyes on You. And I freaked out, so I told Derek this, and he was like, "He's like, I'm sure that happened." He's like, "But that's not the story." And I was like, "Well, what?" Well, didn't you come to the John Mouse show with Keller? That's after. And yeah, so the so had I, we met by that so, point. Okay, so was... the John Mouse show at Johnny Brenda's. In yeah, LA, yeah. <laughs> Second, which show, was epic I think. because I love. I remember that we were John bonding Mouse. over. We, we were, yeah. we were, we were like, Mouse, yeah. we were we were such big fans, and that was such a weird, crazy. Show. And I like I love Johnny Brenda's, in general, uh, but Derek said that. We had been at South by, and it was with B Rock. B Rock played it for us because obviously you guys were working together. And uh, he said that the first time he played this was Old House Was Gone. And as oh. soon as he said that. But Derek hates that it song. It makes so much sense. Does he hate that he song? Hates yeah, he hates that, that song. song. What? And That's you know what? So we funny. have. Don't tell him. And that. I always dedicate it to him. This out Whenever before. he's at a show and we yeah. play, I'm like, this is dedicated and to when Derek. He comes, but you know what? I bet he doesn't feel that way now. We're going to play them. Because the funny thing about De Derek song. also, Hurricane. Hurricane was not his favorite off the bat. Really? And and then he came. Hurricane's like such an obviously yeah, amazing that's song. My that's favorite. so funny, but that wasn't Derek's. And so I remember. So I guess Ben played it then. All Eyes in You was the song that I remember being like. That's the one. This song, it, it felt <laughs> honestly, it felt like a song that I had already listened to, growing up. It felt like I already knew that song by the time I played it. It's like a song that you thought you'd heard in a dream or something. Hmm. Dream and I loved song. it. And then I, I remember. Like and then I think. Yeah, I like that too. We met for beers. Um, the Randolph on Broom. I think I think I hadn't met you, Patty. I think it was you, me, Renee, oh. and Derek, and that was the first time that we met. And I think that was before the Johnny Brenda show. Because the Man, first time I, really... I met you was definitely with Keller at Johnny Brenda. At Johnny Brenda's. And I thought you were, and we were. I just remember back everyone. We not, everyone like, else oh, was kind of like. Pick a song. Pick a song. Do you remember that? We, we were, were riding like, in the van. We were like, like driving. Oh, I do remember that. And we were like, you pick a song. And now. you're in the car, and everyone got a chance to play what yeah. they wanted in the car. And I was like, oh, this is such a good tour mode because <laughs> yeah. when, we're in, when we're on tour, we miss Mr. Stuff. Like, I'm absolutely being such a radio hog. I like, won't let anyone else play their you, music. You have to. And I was like, that was like, this is so beautiful and diplomatic. That seems like she's family already. And everyone gets to like have their turn. We and definitely don't do that anymore. It was like all over the map. Yeah, everyone has their headphones on. I just remember from that show how like everyone in the audience kind of like had this like serious look on their face and you were just like smiling like, <laughs> the whole time. You that just doesn't like, sound like me at all. No, not at all. Smiley. Just never. Just well, I'm always so aggressive about that because I feel like, especially, especially the early shows that you're playing, Johnny Brenda's, or even, you did Downstairs at Union Hall. Mm -hmm. That was the that first. That was the that first, was the first, first. Okay, like so, secret show. So I, I remember that show and it's, it's weird because you're first playing those shows, but everyone from the label is coming out to see it, so it's really weird. You were at that show? I was show? at that show. That was the, that, I was so nervous on that show. That I, was I not a good day I remember that show going me. really well. Oh. And being really impressed as a first show off the bat. You didn't feel that way? It no. was hard to even absorb because, man, we've been rehearsing so much and like Nick Brown, who was our old drummer, yeah. was like so intense and such a Nazi about like, like us rehearsing all the time yeah, getting yeah. everything perfect and crazy and then we got to the show and it was like ah, so, and we knew that there were all that like Nikki Steen was there yeah, and they, like li literally your your whole new industry family is coming out so it doesn't and really we hadn't like even a played show. a show yet and suddenly yeah, there were yeah, all yeah. these like label people then so we were like oh god also this was 
let us not forget my first ever show within a band. You know, it's this yeah. is, uh, like I had played like little piano recitals before. But you've danced. You've that. been on stage as a dancer. That is completely different. Lizzie. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I <laughs> because agree more. I suddenly I was like, oh my god, there's four people relying on my on your parts. Too. And what if I'm gonna oh my? And then my my smile kind of disappeared. And I, was like, and I remember Tommy who played the keys at the time. He like looked at me and he was like. Oh my god, you look so nervous. And I was like, what? Yeah, because it's terrifying. Like, this is gonna help me right now. And, uh, and it was like two minutes before we go on. So, <laughs> it was, I, I was glad to well, get that one. Well, I remember it done. not being a disaster. Good. So, I mean, I remember going well. Like, I was like, for how scared you are, like, I don't remember it being terrifying. But that's funny you say, because you came to my first show. Yeah. Which was at um, Glasslands. Oh, yeah. So nervous. And I. I my brother had come for the show and he like filmed part of it and I recently rewatched it and it was like, it was like such a train wreck. But again, like, you were like, smiling like crazy. Yeah. Not well, I like think I feel like, bad, like you cover like, you, like you know, you cover the smiling. terror with a smile and you're okay. But right. when like you know like, if it, if I'm going to one of like a neon gold band's show, I want to be down in front and smiling because Me too. there's it so really many, helps. It really the band. it really yeah. helps. It makes you feel more comfortable and you're in it together and. Most people in the audience, I think, in general, when you're looking at a crowd, even now, like when you're playing, people aren't really standing there with a smile. They're sort of just watching you because you, they sort of forget that you're watching them. Mm -hmm. But you can definitely see the ones with the smile, and they kind and of it's make awesome. a day. Totally, yeah. Yeah. totally. I agree. And yeah. I think it's like fun to make eye contact with as many people mm -hmm. as possible. Mm -hmm. I can remember like every show growing up where someone that you, I, well, really, it's I remember going. I remember going to a John Mayer show. And he's saying three by fives, and he like made eye contact with me for like two seconds, and I was like, oh, "This is literally <laughs> the best feeling ever." And I felt like so special. So now I'm feeling dewy right know, now. I'm feeling so dewy. So every time I'm at a show, I'm like, I want someone to feel like that. they had that moment. Yeah. That's actually I I use that as a trick because there are still some shows where I get on stage and it like. Like, you know, there are those shows where everything just flows and you're connected with the audience yeah. and it's great, but then there are those and you get up there and you're kind of a little bit somehow in your head or something and maybe feeling a bit nervous or doesn't feel that good. And I use that as a way to make myself feel more connected is totally. I'll just make a point of like looking people in the eye, like going through the audience and really, and then I suddenly feel connected with the audience. Because you feed of their energy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like for me, that's a huge thing. If I, that, And whether it was dancing or not dancing or whatever, it, just being on stage, you know, because we can all do music, but when you have an audience in front of you, you suddenly have this whole new, the, the whole life experience becomes more energetic via the audience. It totally. totally. makes any sense. And you guys have so much energy on stage. It's crazy. I feel like you're dancing literally nonstop. You're throwing your body around. I mean, we were talking before about like how much you injure yourself on stage. Yeah, it does. it's pretty bad. And are you feeling it in the moment? You're like, I'm just riding this high. I'm like not even noticing the fact that I've just well, busted my elbow. Yeah, it's, it's adrenaline. Much. It's just adrenaline. It's like the, the pain, it, like, doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. But I feel like you set the, you set the energy and tone of the audience. And now it's, now it's electric, and I feel like that's such like a good vibe. And something that everyone knows about a St. Lucia show. I feel like you know you're going to a St. Lucia show, and you're going to be so physical the whole time. I know you guys so well. I'm so close to the first record. There's always like this really scary period right before you hear stuff from the second record where you're so excited but you're so tentative. You're like, how have they changed? How have they evolved? Are they going to do the same thing? Yeah. And I and I guess you feel that way about like your own music and you worry about like your favorite artists, how they're going to evolve and change and how you're going to grow with them. And Derek sent me The Winds of Change and that was the first thing I heard from the second record. And it was my like terrible voice memo, and like vocal. I loved it so much and actually it's, it's still my be my favorite on, on the record. I think it's, yeah, it's and my that, favorite. And that's something well. I think really funny about the process is that you always end up sharing like one of your personal favorites mm -hmm. first. And Derek always sort of knows off the bat like the song that gets him hooked too. And I love that it's that song. And I feel like I've heard three iterations of that song. I feel like I heard like the voice memo version. Mm -hmm. And then you had a, a more pronounced version. And then I remember the version that you came into the office and played us. And yeah. Like, I pretty much have the record done. I mean, you went through the second album thing as well. You know, it's like you, you have this vision for your project that is probably very different from what a lot of other people think that you should do mm -hmm. for, for the thing, you know? But it's like, you have to balance developing as an artist and not repeating yourself with right. not presenting people with like a vegan dish when your last record was like 
a barbecue. Yeah, like, yeah. The, you know what I mean? Like, so it's kind of, it is this interesting balancing act where you're really trying to be true to yourself and how you've grown as an individual and, and as an artist, but then also like realizing that there is such a thing as style and that certain elements of repeating yourself is not a bad thing. You don't have to completely reinvent the wheel, you know? I feel like you did that perfectly. For me, on the other side of it, yeah, you had sort of started to be seen as this very like one type of pop and very much in this tropical field ahead of everyone else doing the tropical thing. I would know. I think you're real. <laughs> real trailblazers. But <laughs> you really took a lot of like the tone and sonics of the first record and evolved it in a way that grew out of sort of like just being that one thing where now I would never mm -hmm. describe you purely as just a tropical electro band. Like that's not who you are to me anymore. Thank you. And it's it's awesome. And you're such an amazing writer and producer that it's you literally have the tools to do it yourself and I love that. I feel like you're gonna keep doing stuff for St. Lucia, but I also am so excited for you to work with other artists more and more. You know, I know that you've done that a little bit with the hearts, but I feel like Yeah the world is so available for you to I'm commit to other acts. I really want you to do that. I'm definitely like wanna potentially do that more coming off this record because I think going into making matter was just like we literally got off the road from our totally. photo and like the the like we got off on Thursday and the Monday we started recording the next record. So it was kind of this very quick thing. Yeah. But I feel like with this one I want to take a bit more space, maybe work with you a little bit. Woo! I uh, love it. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm super psyched to hear like some of the some of the new stuff you've been working on as well. Well Patty, I'd always heard that you were you were very involved with the lyrics. Uh, no, I'm not actually. Really? No, yeah. It, I like how that's like a thing. But we did. I put did that post once where like we were sitting working on oh, lyrics. Oh yeah. Well, I do have like. I just feel like I'm more involved in the. Okay, this is sounding good. Yay. Yeah. This is sounding bad. Nay. Or like <laughs> sometimes I get these bursts of when I write music. I like to write it just purely by myself, tucked away. Give me a piano put a candle on like very romantic you yeah. know so when I hear um so sometimes John like he he sometimes like just earwigs and like hears something and he's like yo can we play that again yeah, so yeah. it's like it's more of that right like that's how always he, was written like I'll which, I'll start yeah. with something and he'll hear it and he'll go oh babes just play that again and I'm like then I get shy and then I go no John this is this that sounds wrong do it again and, yeah. <laughs> then I take over <laughs> yeah we definitely have a very fiery studio relationship. Yeah. We like scream at each other. Yeah, we and, a, and a fiery on stage relationship, <laughs> I would say. But it's, it's like funny because like we do have a fiery relationship, but I feel like there's nobody else that gets me better than Jean. You know, and like I think vice versa. I feel like if if there's something inside of him that he needs to let like let out, I am good at like coaxing that out of him, and I'm just saying like yeah just do it well know? how lucky that you have each other on stage to be able to to be able to encourage one another in those moments but also have one another to celebrate the moments where you're like I never thought we'd be playing a ball of blues out of this oh, many people yeah. you know because yeah. to share those highs when you know where you're coming from I love you guys so much thank you for doing this it's really special that we get to work together all the time and the more that we're friends and neighborhood rats and Thank you so much for thanks for talking to us, man. Yeah, thank you for doing, doing this. Yeah. This is awesome, by the way. Yeah, this I, is I awesome. I love how you're doing this. Thank you, Vivo. Go, yes, go Vivo. <laughs> yeah, go Vivo. The right have an yeah, amazing, they did. They have did. an amazing time on tour. Thank you. Everyone should go see them on tour. They're yes. one of the best live bands in the world, and I'm not biased because we work together. <laughs> That's fact. Yes. Boosh. Gadoosh. <laughs> okay.